So as we continue on here with our YouTube Live event, we have another wonderful nonprofit who's new to us this year in the Great Fish Community Challenge. They are not, my mask is falling off here, right? So this is always good. Um, they are not new to us as an organization. They have been applying for community grants and we've been familiar with their work and very pleased to work with Montana Conservation Corps for a long time. But this is their first uh, time to participate in the Great Fish Community Challenge. And I would like to welcome Carol Bibler, who I believe is their board chair, yes. um, to participate here with me and tell you a little bit about their work, especially the work that they're doing in the Flathead Valley because I believe their use of funds is funding those programs. So without further ado, here is Miss Carol Bibler. We're up everywhere. Thank you so much, Lynette. I'm so happy to be here and uh, grateful to the Whitefish Community Foundation for all you do for the Valley. What? Okay, I am board chair of Montana Conservation Corps, and our organization inspires young people through hands on service to our public lands and to our communities. And so the way we do that is to get young people out addressing the backlog of needs on our public lands. They are working for the Forest Service, the Park Service, the state parks, uh, restoring trails and habitat, repairing bridges, uh, getting rid of noxious weeds. Um, just for example, a few of our projects in the Flathead this summer have involved um, uh, weed mitigation on Wild Horse Island, uh, clearing a badly um, overgrown deadfold trail, the Bear Dance Trail near Big Fork. Um, we've been up in the Cabinet Mountains working. We've been getting rid of noxious weeds in Glacier National Park. Those are just a few of the projects that our young people have been doing here in the Flathead. We were hit pretty hard with COVID. Um, our cash flow is always low in um, the early in the season in the months of uh, March and April before our young people are getting out there and, and our organization is getting paid to do the work they do. And so the, um, when, the, when the Forest Service, Park Service, BLM canceled our early season March and April projects, we were in a real financial bind. And unfortunately, we had to lay off a number of staff Furthermore, we decided it would not be safe to run our youth crews. Those are the, um, the teenagers uh, still in high school and middle school. You know, we have a, spend a lot of time in vans, a lot of time in tents and shared spaces, and just didn't feel we could do that this year. But the good news is our older young people, what we call the young adult crews, have been out busily working on all the kinds of projects that I just described, and they've been getting huge accolades for the important work they've been doing. Um, your donation to Montana Conservation Corps through the Great Fish Challenge will help us rebuild our youth programs for 2021, and that means that teenagers in the Flathead will once again get to participate in this no-cost programming that gets them out in nature, gets them doing meaningful service work, gaining valuable job skills, um, developing a strong work ethic, and learning how important it is to give back to our communities while having a really good adventure. So with your help, we can, we can make sure those programs are strong for 2021. We can also um, fund our, our legendary or, or very well-renowned leadership development program. That program, it, it trains our crew leaders. So before they ever go out in the field and start leading crews, our, our, our crew leaders, um, we invest several months of training in them, things like group dynamics, health and safety, how you continue to motiva motivate a group of young people when the going gets tough, the weather's bad, um, the bugs are bad, it's hard sleeping in a tent and being away from social media and being away from your friends, how you continue to inspire them and keep them going. All of that goes into our leadership training and that costs money. We're not making any money while we are training those young people. So 
that will be another important use of the funds that you hopefully will be sending our way. Thank you so much, Carol. So one thing I think we've all noticed through COVID is how you know, fortunate we are to live in a beautiful place where we can recreate outside and you know, how important that is really to all of us. I think you know, so many people are out there, I've never seen it so busy um, in the areas that you directly work in. And I was just wondering if you had any sort of unique perspective on that, if you've heard um, you know, from donors or from, from the public, you know, their, their thoughts about that or their appreciation of your work. We hear um, those positive comments all the time. And just for example, on the 4th of July, I was over at Wild Horse Island. Uh, it was a very busy place, of course, because everybody wanted to be in that beautiful state park on the 4th of July. And the, um, the volunteer hosts, a, a couple from Florida who, who are living at um, Wild Horse Island all summer to make sure that visitors are behaving responsibly and so forth. They did not know who I was. They did not know I had any association with Montana Conservation Corps. But for some reason, they brought up the fact that these this wonderful group of Conservation Corps young adults had just been there the previous week and had not only um, pulled and sprayed all kinds of noxious weeds that were becoming a real problem. They had also assisted uh, an older gentleman who was visiting and suddenly had heart problems, I think it was, and they dropped what they were doing to go help this man and, and administer some first aid. And, and they were just going on and on about how wonderful these young people were. And um, I, I couldn't help but then interject and say, well, I'm really happy to hear that because um, I am associated with this organization. So we do get lots of good feedback. Uh, so many trails, if, if you tried to get out early season in April or May and your favorite trail was covered in down timber, um, that's where we were, once it was safe to do so, we were getting calls from our project partners saying, please come help, we need your young people to clear these trails. And so we do get good feedback. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming by to see us today, Carol. Once again, welcome to the Great Fish Community Challenge. We're uh, thrilled to have Montana Conservation Corps as a participant, a first time participant this year, and we hope for many years to come. Thanks, thank you. So next up, we have Miss Cora Arnold, and Cora is with Flathead Cancer Aid Services, and she's been with them for um, some time. And I'm going to let you tell her all about Flathead, Flathead Cancer Aid Services and what they do. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Lynette. I really appreciate your, um, this opportunity that uh, Great Fish is giving us to talk about our organization. Um, again, this is Flathead Cancer Aid Services, and we provide uh, for Flathead Valley residents that are facing cancer and um, in seeking treatment, we help pay their everyday bills like their mortgage, their rent, um, utility, car payments, things that, you know, your regular health insurance doesn't pay. It, you know, during when they're seeking treatment, it's it really does help to be able to not have to worry about that mortgage payment. And... Uh, some, some individuals that are fighting cancer, um, they, they won't even seek treatment because of the, they're afraid of the burden that it's going to place on their family. We have serve around 30 to 40 families every year. We would love to expand that and also expand the dollar amount that we uh, provide to these people. Um, it's, you know, everybody has been affected by cancer one way or another. You know somebody who's got cancer. You've had cancer yourself. Uh, you know, everybody's affected by this. You know, in some cases, some people are financially um, strapped with because the, they can't work or their, their wife needs to be taken care of, their child needs to be taken care of. And then in other cases, it's emotional support that is needed. Maybe it's not financial, but, you know, cancer is a serious thing and it affects people in different ways. And, but our organization tries to alleviate those burdens of uh, the financial burdens uh, we'd like again like to thank uh, Great Fish, uh, Whitefish Community uh, Foundation. Uh, without you guys, you, we would not be able to reach the, as many people as we do because this is one of our main um, organizations. We don't have a face or a storefront or a, 
an office or anything. It's just word of mouth and um, the fundraising in that that we do. And you're just such a big part of it. And we really thank you for that. Um, we've been very blessed in the last couple of years or more, um, some generous anonymous donors. <laughs> and I mean, they're huge donations, which have set us to where we could get the full match from the foundation. Um, and not only that, um, thousands of dollars to go to the patients. 99% uh, of our um, resources go to the patients. We are not a paid staff or anything. So just know that any of those donations that you're giving to us go to the, the recipients. So I have a question for Cora. Um, we love Flathead Cancer Aid Services, and I believe they've been with Great Fish Community Challenge since inception. But we all know that we're you know, struggling with COVID-19. And I'm just curious, are you seeing, um, you know, families are suffering? And is that mean that the demand for your services has increased or what are you hearing out there in the community about that? I actually have that on my list um, because COVID-19 has really put a lot of strain in many different ways. Um, first of all, raising funds is going to be a little bit more challenging for us this year, but we're on for the tackle. I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes here in a bit. But also, on the other end, um, for just bringing awareness to what we do is really important because um, what is it called? The, the alternative um, surgeries or, or there's a word for it. I can't come up with it right now. Uh, that they're not doing these surgeries for these patients. The, the cancer people, the people with cancer aren't going to the hospital to be diagnosed with cancer. So they're sitting at home. So we're not going to probably have as many people coming to us for help because they're not getting the diagnosis. They're not getting, uh, our, we have two navigators um, at the hospital that tell the client, the, the patient, you know, give them the resources like us that we're there to assist them. So if they're not going to the hospital, they're not going to get the word out. So uh, this Facebook page hopefully will reach some people that are fighting cancer right now and are dealing with the financial struggles that, uh, you know, go to our website, flatheadcanceraid.org and check us out and fill out an application. We'll see if we can help you. Since it is kind of challenging for us, this year we are teaming up with the Stumptown Art Studio um, and we have created a, a campaign called Art of Healing. Now, that's not a, a unique saying, but it speaks exactly what the campaign that we want to, um, to reach out to people. So we're going to paint 75 rocks, and it's going to have a butterfly, and the body is going to be a, butter, uh, a paintbrush. And um, we're going to create a Facebook page called Art of Healing WF for whitefish. And we're if you find one of these rocks that we're going to post next week or, or hide next week around whitefish, you can um, post it on our that Facebook page and share it and then come down to Stumptown Art Studio and spin the wheel for a, a little, little prize. Um, maybe you'd like to post a rock uh, that you find in memory of somebody that you know that um, um, has had cancer or, is, or in honor of somebody that is struggling or has passed with cancer. Right now, we're still we're still working out a few of the details. Um, I'm sure Stumptown will talk about it as well. Um, but if you need when when we get to it, when we, you want more details on it, go to the Stumptown Art Studio website at, or our website, um, the Fathead Cancer Aid Service website, and the Facebook page Art of Healing. And we just really covet all of the donations that you give us. And um, I want to just take a moment to read this little motto that we came up with. So. Go explore whitefish, find a rock, post it to our Facebook page, and get a spin at Stumptown Art Studio. Let's keep the message going, the art of healing. Art can heal, art can inspire, cancer can be beat. Join us in our campaign to spread the word of the art of healing. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, Cora, for that. I'm looking forward to finding a butterfly, right? And I want to just reiterate again, I'm, you know, we all were here on this great day and this launch party and we have you two live going on. So, you know, if you have a friend that is struggling that maybe isn't hasn't been to the hospital and is worried about getting a diagnosis that they don't want to hear about, or because due to COVID they aren't seeking healthcare services you know, they can reach out to Flathead Cancer Aid Services, and I'm sure Flathead Cancer Aid Services can put them in touch with the people that they need to, to reach. So thank you for that. And we're looking forward to hearing more about the art of healing from Stuntown Art Studio later today. 
And uh, yes, good luck in the Great Fish Community Challenge. Thank and thank you so much for participating. So it looks like we have more incentive grants to draw. And I can also bet that we're not going to draw a bunch more given on behalf of Casey, Casey Howard because we've drawn all of her gifts already today. <laughs> There's still more in there, Daria says. So right. let's have a shake up and we'll dig in around. And our first one is going to be... Okay, we've got Cindy Schlesinger, and she has given to Farmhands Nourish the Flathead, and she is going to have an extra $25 uh, added to her gift. So that will go to Farmhands Nourish the Flathead. Okay, so sorry, I have to readjust my math. It's okay if all these little slips have, you know, been contaminated by me and my bleachy hand. Okay, the next one we have Karen Mellon, and she's given to Glacier Institute, and that's going to be a $50 incentive grant to Glacier Institute. So thank you so much, Karen, for giving, and I'm sure Anthony and everyone at Glacier Institute will really appreciate that. So who do we have next? Digging around, and we pull out Albert Liston, and Albert gave to the Match Fund, and he gave $25 to the Match Fund, so thank you, Albert. That will be matched. We'll put a match on it. So that the way the match fund works, for those of you that don't know, is the Whitefish Community Foundation launches, launches the Great Fish Community Challenge with a $200,000 match. And that match challenges everyone in the community to give. And we grow the match. You can donate to the match, which Albert did, which we really appreciate. Thank you so much, Albert, because at the end of the campaign, that gift will be... Um, well, every single nonprofit that's participating will share in that gift. So as a match fund grows... Um, so does our Great Fish Matching Grant at the end of the campaign. I'm having huge trouble with my mask. Um, and at last year, we gave a 49% match uh, on the first $20,000, the maximum that each nonprofit raised. And that equated to a $9,800 maximum matching grant. So thank you, Albert, for making a difference with that and for giving me the chance to talk about the match. The last one, Daria. Okay. Okay. Wow, here we have Patricia Jepson. And Patricia, we may have drawn earlier as well. So Patricia gave to Childbridge and that will be a $50 gift added to her gift that will go to Childbridge. So thank you so much, Patricia, for coming by early in the day. Um, we have now drawn two of yours and we've drawn quite a few of Casey Howard's. So we really appreciate you dropping by to give. And uh, also we appreciate everyone who's come to visit us in our parking lot today, dropping off a gift, coming by to say hi. I have to tape my mask behind my ears or take it off, I guess, is the thing for the moment. Uh, so next up, we have Shepherd's Hand Free Clinic. Shepherd's Hand that's uh, here to visit with us. We have Jennifer Hyatt. She's the executive director at Shepherd's Hand. And I'm going to pass the microphone to her. And she can tell you a little bit about all the great things that they do. It smells like pitch, so that's great. <laughs> great, so... Thank you, Lynette, and thank you um, to all of you here from the Whitefish Community Foundation. Uh, so let me just give you a little bit about Shepherd's Hand. Our mission is to support um, and improve the health and well-being of those in need. Um, and the way we do that right now is through a free medical and dental clinic. Um, we are partnered also with North Valley Hospital and Kalispell Regional, um, and they help um, allow free lab and radiology testing to all of our patients as well as um, specialty referrals. Um, so we were really able to provide comprehensive and quality healthcare to those in our community who are in need. Um, so this year we are raising funds for direct program support. And for us, um, one of the big chunks of that is uh, prescription medication assistance. Um, so we know that many really struggle on a monthly basis just to um, meet their financial obligations. And a lot of people will forego all together or stretch um, out their medication so they take less than their prescribed amount. Um, and we really don't wanna see that happen. We want people to know that we are here and that we will cover the costs of those medications that we prescribe through Shepherd's Hand. So that's um, a big asset to those who are in need right now. I have a question for Jennifer about that. Um, 
and I don't think you mentioned it earlier, but I apologize if you did. Uh, but how would a person who is in that type of need um, reach you? Would they need to come to clinic or can they get in touch with you? What's the best way to find you? Sure. There's actually a few ways you can get in touch with us and find us um, so that we may um, provide help. Um, an easy way is to call us. Um, we are always available to answer the phone and help guide you through whether or not you need to come in or whether we can help through sort of a telehealth sort of situation. Um, but so you may call us anytime or um, you can find our contact information either on our Facebook page or our website, which is um, www.shepherdshand.com. Um, so all that contact information is right there. So we're ready, willing, and available to be here to come help. And are you guys seeing at Shepherd's Hand a change um, sort of in how people can reach you due to COVID-19? I mean, how does that affect Shepherd's Hand Free Clinic or Shepherd's Hand in general? Um, yeah, so we have had to change um, our operations and the way we are seeing patients right now. Um, we've had to set up a triage station outside of the clinic um, where we do a screening process. Um, and so we are trying to really make sure that we keep the health and risk factors down as much as we possibly can. So we are um, screening and only letting people inside the clinic that do not pose um, direct risk. And then for those that are symptomatic or have those sorts of issues, we are actually treating them outside in their vehicles. Um, and so that has also brought up upon us um, an additional financial need for our clinic of um, personal protective equipment, much you know beyond what we have typically budgeted for. Um, so we are definitely seeing an increase in that sort of need. So. We are really fortunate with our group of volunteers and, um, and our donors that have supported us in the past and through this that we are able to keep our doors open and keep treating people. Well, Shepherd's Hand Free Clinic has been with us in the Greatfish Community Challenge since inception, I believe. And uh, we're very pleased always to work with everyone there. Such a great organization, a whitefish organization founded here, right? Um, and I guess I don't have a lot of other questions, but if you would like to add anything else, I'm happy to let you do that. I just really want to say thank you again to um, all the donors out there. Um, thank you in advance and thank you to the Whitefish Community Foundation for putting on this event. Um, I am so impressed on our community and the way this organization or the way um, the community foundation can spotlight all these organizations. It just makes me so proud to be part of our community and thankful for you guys. Um, this fundraising event allows us all to keep focused on doing our work and not trying to um, pull in all the needed money. So we're, I greatly appreciate this and thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for coming to see us today. Um, again, that's Shepherd's Hand Free Clinic, uh, a longtime great community challenge participant. Uh, we really appreciate everything that they do, and we wish you all the best of luck thank in this great fish community challenge. Thanks, Jen. We'll see you later. Next up, now we have Allison. I believe it's Symes, but it might be Seams. And there aren't many people that I have not yet met out there uh, in our nonprofit world, but I've not met Allison before. So I'm very pleased to meet Allison. And she's with us from the Bob Marshall Wilderness Foundation. Uh, and again, a longtime Great Fish Community Challenge participant. And I want to say a little bit unique, our only one based in Hungry Horse. Uh, let Allison tell you about the organization and about the Bob Marshall Wilderness, which we all love. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. I'll start with a little bit uh, about the Bob itself. Um, if you're not familiar with the Bob Marshall Wilderness Complex, it's a 1.5 million acre wilderness area here in Montana. It's absolutely incredible. It, um, it's the third largest uh, wilderness complex in the lower 48 states and has two wild and scenic rivers, the Middle and South Fork, 
of the Flathead River, um, incredible habitat for elk and grizzly bear and gray wolves. Um, just an amazing place. If you haven't been in, uh, definitely recommend taking a visit into the Bob. And so the Bob Marshall Wilderness Foundation preserves access to the trails and um, preserves habitat within the Bob Marshall Wilderness Complex. And we do that mainly through our volunteer adventures, where we take crews of volunteers into the wilderness to open trails, um, clear trails, improve tread, all of that good stuff. And uh, we do that all with primitive tools, since there are no motors allowed in the wilderness. So we use crosscut saws, Pulaski's, Picmatics lots of hand tools to uh, clear the trails and make sure they're open and accessible for all users. Uh, we also restore habitat within the Bob with our weeds program. So we fight invasive weeds that were introduced to the wilderness by humans over the years. Um, stuff like spotted knapweed or yellow-toed flax. So it works to restore the native habitat and really um, allow those native plants to thrive, which is so important for the ecosystem. Along with our volunteer adventures, we also offer a couple of different internship programs for young people who are interested in um, natural resource related careers. So we have both our Wilderness Conservation Corps crew, which kind of act as a professional crew to uh, work all summer with one of our crew leaders. And then we also have Wilderness Ranger internships, which actually embeds an intern within the Forest Service to give them that experience. Um, let's see what else. We also offer uh, packer apprenticeships every summer. We offer a couple of those and that helps kind of build that next generation of wilderness packers, which is really essential to our work. We rely on um, horses and mules to get all of our gear back there to um, supply our crews. So we want to help out those folks. It's kind of an aging population right now. We're trying to get some new blood in there. So the Wilderness Packer Apprenticeships are also really important. Um, and all of this work is really focused on creating the next generation of conservation leaders. Um, all of our crews learn Leave No Trace principles and skills to become better backcountry users. And we're really focused on, you know, hoping that they bring those memories back home with them from the backcountry to become future wilderness advocates and keep it protected for years to come. Okay, Allison. So thank you so much for all of that. So I just wanted to ask, so, you know, this is a unique year we have due to coronavirus. And how is that impacting the work that you're doing in the Bob? Are you still able to get out there and accomplish what you need to accomplish? Yeah, great question. So COVID-19 has definitely impacted our work this year. Uh, we actually just had to make the hard decision to cancel the rest of our volunteer projects uh, last week. So we did have a handful of volunteer projects that went in this year, and we felt like those were really safe and successful. But just with the current spike that's going on, we've decided to make the decision to just keep our crews um, with the people that we have on staff. So we're still hard at work in the wilderness. We're still getting stuff done. We still have uh, both of our internships going on and our crew leaders are out there working. We're even getting some of our office staff into the back country to uh, do some scouting and stuff like that. So, and really this year with COVID, um, the Bob has seen more traffic than maybe ever before. Um, so there is no shortage of work to be done. Um, Lots of people back there, lots of mitigating those user impacts kind of after the fact. So uh, we definitely have our work cut out for us. Uh, so we definitely still need your support. And we would love to be on your list for Great Fish. Um, yeah. Okay, Allison. Well, thank you so much for coming by and visiting us from the Bob Marshall Wilderness Foundation. We uh, really appreciate everything you do. And, you know, good luck this year in the Great Fish Community Challenge.